now the U.S. and Russia are firmly on opposite sides of the Syrian civil war. All of this stirring up memories of the Cold War years. News 5's Leon Bibb is here and Leon here in Cleveland. Back then, we were ready to shoot down Russian bombers if it came to that. We were ready to do that. and It was a good thing it didn't come to that because it certainly could have affected our lives right here in Cleveland. Case in point, this story. You know, this is a story from my not so long ago past. Daily, I used to see U.S. Army missile sites in Cleveland. It was a time when the Soviet Union, which transitioned into Russia, and the U.S. first went nose to nose in political confrontation, sometimes only an eye blink away from war. The barbed wire is silent now, but once it could bark loudly and deadly because of what it contained. Decades ago, this land in Greater Cleveland housed military secrets and enough firepower to bring down overhead enemy aircraft. This is a corner of the Cleveland suburb of Brattonall, which hugs the Lake Erie shoreline. Years ago, these buildings were barracks for U.S. soldiers and firing points for anti-aircraft missiles designed for one job, shoot down enemy aircraft on bomb runs for Cleveland. This is what the missiles could do. This was a test firing into an unmanned airplane. It was the Cold War of the 1950s and 60s. U.S. and Soviet Union tensions reached fever pitch. So much so, there were 265 sites of Nike missiles around the U.S each with a battery of Nikes to take down enemy aircraft. In Cleveland, there were eight Nike missile sites. In the crosshairs would be any Soviet military aircraft. Why Cleveland? We were strategic because we were a production facility and fully expected that if war broke out, the Soviet bombers would come over. Historian John Grabowski of the Cleveland History Center of the Western Reserve Historical Society has long studied those times and lived through them too. In the 50s and 60s, Washington was wary of the Soviets, realizing Cold War could escalate to hot. The Nikes were to protect U.S. cities from invasion in the air. This is Bratnall, one of the old missile sites. Around Cleveland, there were eight such sites when I was a kid growing up. The idea was for the missiles here to shoot down any Soviet aircraft, which may have come over the North Pole, through Canada, over Lake Erie, into Cleveland. The attack would have come from the polar area. That's the shortest route from the Soviet Union to a place like Cleveland in the middle of the United States. In this country, the Nikes were never fired in combat. Still, the idea of the possibility of bombs raining from enemy aircraft over Cleveland was sobering. Stay prepared, said America. It had only been a generation since World War II and its horrors. American families remembered those days. With the Soviets' bomb and missile buildups came higher tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. No shooting, but a constant vigilance. With Bratanol, Cleveland had several more Nike sites, each missile heavy. One was in Warrensville Township, one was in uh, Parma, Parma Heights, another one was out in Garfield Heights, one was in Fairview Park, I think another one in Willowick. In the event of war, eight missile sites around Cleveland were to protect the city. It was a different time, with an enemy threat so strong, Cleveland school children were drilled in duck and cover. Children were taught to shelter themselves as best they could from any exploding bomb dropped from the air. It was get under the duck the desk and duck and cover, um, or go down to a basement area or something like that. These were times of my childhood. For me, thought of why to duck and cover was horrifying. The missiles at the Nike sites increased my tensions even higher with fears of war in my hometown. Recently at my old elementary school, I looked at the hallways where my classmates and I took shelter practice. Here I learned to duck and cover, hoping I would never have to do it for real. When we had civil defense drills, we kids would line up in the hallway of this school face the wall and kneel as if to shield ourselves from any Soviet bomb blast. I didn't fully understand it at that time, but I later grew to understand all of that was because of the Cold War. Different times indeed in Cleveland. There were signs like this identifying buildings of community shelter in the event of an enemy attack. This one is in Cleveland's Little Italy neighborhood. Here people would run for cover in an attack. The old sign hangs on as a stark reminder. But gone are the Cleveland missile sites. 
What was one in Ratanol is now the Defense Department Contract Management Agency. Quiet here now, but decades ago, this place in Cleveland was a U.S. military fist of power, ready to take down enemy aircraft in Cleveland skies if the Cold War ever turned hot. The 265 Nike missile sites nationwide eventually were dismantled. The eight in Cleveland were taken down in the 1960s. But for a while, U.S. Army missiles in Cleveland stood ready. If any Soviet Union bombers had flown over the North Pole, pushed through Canada with Cleveland's armaments and steel industries in the Soviet's bomb sites. But that never came to pass, and the Cleveland missiles never had to be fired. An interesting chapter in our mm -hmm. history. Yes, indeed.